Welcome back guys. So we're on our way to the shop. We've been waiting on a package to show up that just showed up from UPS. It was uh, a, an additional package I needed as far as all the wiring and stuff goes. Guys, I just want to take a quick second though and uh, give a quick shout out to Sam from Dialed In Motorsports. Without him, guys, I don't know if I would really even be to the point that I am now. Uh, I know that I wouldn't have nearly as much confidence and uh, probably not as much understanding as I do now. And it's all thanks to him. So, if you guys are thinking about doing any of this kind of stuff, uh, as far as like, you know, standalone ECUs and wiring and stuff goes, uh, he is extremely knowledgeable. One of the few people that I probably trust the most when it comes to Mtron things. Um, so I will go ahead and link his Instagram down at the bottom of the screen there, as well as in the description. Do me a favor, go check it out, give him some support. I'd really appreciate that. I know he would too, uh, because he will be probably one of the main reasons that we find the success that we're looking for. So I'd be very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, like I said, on our way to the shop. So go ahead and pull up to the shop show you guys what we've been waiting on and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and dive right into today's video so let's go pretty much i'd say probably about 90 percent done with wiring up the pump now in order for this pump to work we have to basically wire in a relay the relay needs to be a 75 amp relay and it needs to be triggered by basically a key on ignition this yellow wire here is actually the uh, brushless pump control so what it does is it uses a zero to five volt range basically zero being off five volts being full blast and that needs to run into the mtron now we'll touch base on that in a minute you can see all the wire kind of messed up up there but i figured i'd go ahead and show you guys how exactly i went about wiring the relay because it is also very important that it is hooked up right and you have the proper fuse and the proper amperage rating on the relay itself so first First, we have this blue loomed wire that runs directly from our battery positive post into a 50 amp fuse. And then from there, we have the red wire that runs into what would be uh, number 30 on the relay. Now, 87 on the relay will be power to the actual pump here. Now, in order to trigger this relay, to actually trigger the pump on with power, we have these other two little posts, these little spade connectors right here. Okay, these are 85 and 86. Now, now, 86 needs to be a key on ignition source. So basically when you turn the key, it comes on. I was having some problems trying to figure out what exactly to use, what I could steal or hijack in order to trigger it. And Sam has done a really good job. He's helped me out a bunch, like huge shout out to him. Basically what we did, there was this guy, this plug here, and this would go into like a stock fuel tank hat here i would plug in like that now since we're not using that anymore there's four wires there's these two this blue this black and red and then there's two other wires that are in here now but these are actually the wires you need these are a power and a ground and those power and grounds come through here down into here. So these are our spade connectors. Now power is gonna go into 86 on the relay and ground will go to 85. This will be our key on trigger for the relay because obviously the stock fuel pump controller and circuit there is not capable or suited to this super power hungry air motive pump. So instead of powering the pump with that wire, we're gonna actually power the circuit or basically 
basically a relay instead. So as long as you do that, this should be all done. Like I said, 87 will be our power source back into the pump. And then the black wire here obviously is just a ground. So this comes off here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and ground this directly to the ground post on the battery as well. And believe it or not, guys, that's going to be it. I need some like ring terminals that are suited for 12 gauge wire. Unfortunately, I only have big ones. That is actually like a six gauge wire. Now I'm going to touch on something important here. And that has to do with gauge of wire. You must, this is a must, okay? You must run at least six to eight gauge wire directly from the battery to the fuse and then from the fuse to the relay. It has to be, the power in has to be six to eight gauge. Now, the wires that are existing on the pump already are power and ground are 12 gauge and then the trigger yellow is 16 gauge. Obviously, you don't need a really big thick wire uh, for like a trigger because technically it's only seeing zero to five volt. Now, because it's 12 volts and because it's a power hungry pump, uh, I know I keep saying that, but I'm just trying to put some emphasis on it. You need to put a little bit bigger of wire. 12 gauge is pretty sufficient. So I went ahead and all this wire is uh, Tefzel. So it's M22759 mil spec wire. This is like aerospace grade wire. It's pretty much heat resistant. It can handle upwards of 600 volts. Even like a 20 gauge wire can handle a massive amount of power. I guess you could say it's like flame retardant as well. Corrosion resistant. It's uh, fluid resistant. Definitely the first choice when it comes to cars, right? Now, I ended up getting all this from ProWire USA, but here's a, an example of like a part number. This wire is actually on a nationwide shortage right now. I'm very lucky that I even got wire to do this build. Now, it is also quite expensive. In comparison, there's another brand, TXL, that is much cheaper. But the great thing about Tefsel is you have basically your copper on the inside here, which I doubt it'll focus. But the actual gauge of the copper inside of the the sheathing is still 16 gauge, but the sheathing itself is extremely thin. There you go, you can see, super thin, which when you think about having 50 wires all together for like say an engine harness or something, obviously size matters, right? Because if you have a super thick sheathing with a bunch of wires, your harness is gonna end up being like that big around, right? The great thing about Tesla is because it's so thin, you can end up having a wiring harness that's only that thick which is super awesome highly recommend this if you're wanting to do something like this txl and tefsel should be the only choice for a race car build i will say you know i thought oh you know i could probably do this with just some like cheap amazon wire copper's copper you know whatever but at the end of the day i do not want electrical problems and i want longevity and reliability tefsel was my first choice so why are you gonna say hooked it up and uh, sam at dialed in motorsports really 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 pointed me in the right direction direction luckily i'm able to do that for you guys and man to be honest a couple spade connectors and this will be all wrapped up i'm gonna go ahead and touch base on this yellow wire on the mtron and uh we will kind of put this one on the back burner and move on to the next step up here at the front of the car this is our yellow wire that's running from the pump here we have our mtron kv12 and this plug right here is going to be our d plug this one has our ethernet connection and uh, a handful of other very important input Inputs and outputs. Now, I wanted to touch base real quick on what exactly I'm going to be doing with this wire from the pump. And basically, a good example is this sheet right here. This is basically what I have gone ahead and did as far as wiring goes. Obviously we have our 12 volt battery, comes over and it's fused into a 20 amp relay or a 20 amp fuse. There's also an ignition switch here, which would be like our key on area. Then we have our relay 30 in power from the battery, 87 to fuel pump, 86 is positive or power from our fuel pump controller and then ground from our fuel pump controller. We come over to I guess what would be this diagram here. This diagram shows all of our connectors and what we are focused on right now is our connector D. On our D connector here on pin D19 there is something called AV out 1 which this is actually what they call analog out. It is an output but it is the only output that will essentially allow you to build a table where you can run uh, like a 0 to 5 volts and use it to control the fuel pump. So 
what we are gonna end up doing here, I can go into more detail if you guys would like, but I don't know how long this video is gonna be and I don't uh, really wanna bore you a whole bunch. Just know we are gonna take our yellow wire from the pump and we are going to plug it in to our plug here on pin D19. see right there right next to the yellow wire it says 19 that is the pin we need so on these plugs here you have one side that has like a long rectangle the other side has two small ones in order to release the pins all you do is you just press this guy down it pops and now you can pull pretty much any of your wires out in order to keep them in place all you got to do is just press that guy back in there and press these guys down and just like that, it's all flush. Now you can pull on this wire and they won't come out. I absolutely love these plugs. These are pretty standard on pretty much uh, most ECUs, most standalone ECUs, where they have a connector that has similar function like this. Uh, I know that like MoTeC, FuelTech, Mtron, they all kind of have this same style connector here. So that pretty much wraps up the fuel pump and uh, hope this helps. I'm excited to actually get into the software and see what that's all like too and of course i'll show that you guys that when we get there i was gonna wrap this one up we'll go ahead and touch base on the ignition system and the harness i'm building for that that'll probably wrap this one up well guys if you haven't already don't forget to click that subscribe button down below for me while you're down there go ahead and turn on those bell notifications because i want to make sure you're notified every time i post a video guys i plan on posting a whole lot more content here coming up i apologize that i haven't been posting a lot of content but this was probably one one of the most important processes of this and I just wanted to make sure that I had a good understanding and a good grasp and I was confident in making videos and content to go ahead and point you guys in the right direction. I had to make sure that everything was all put together, had all the right parts and pieces and everything that I needed in order to give you guys the best info I could. If you guys have made it this far, thank you. Seriously, thank you. I truly appreciate you guys sticking it out with me through the last couple months. Guys, we are so so close to having this car running and guys i am super excited about this i hope you guys tune into the next one and we'll leave it off there catch you guys later peace